Hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Ugh! Uh, Emmett! Uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. Why didn't you wake me up? I tried to give you a nudge before I left, but you were practically comatose. How long has it been since you slept? Aside from being knocked unconscious, I'm not really sure. Anyway, I left you back at the lab to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Back to the Future. Jeez, Doc. Watch out, you almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. So... How are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dip just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! Uh-oh. What the hell? Where'd it go? Quickly, Marty, let's find it before oh, uh, other Doc does. Oh, come on. Come to Marte, so we can parte. Here, little static thingy. Maybe if I go slowly? Damn it! Uh, maybe we have something in the inventory that'll help. Uh, paper? Bedlam had Brown divorce hearing. Wife takes pot shot at a strange tubby, famed industrialist Emmett Brown. I don't believe it. He's still fated to marry her. That's not good. Um. Oh, the lamp. Just come to me. Gotcha. Oh, poor Marty. Uh, this is the last, um, episode in the game. I mean, th this this episode on YouTube isn't the last one, but this is the last chunk. It's kind of bittersweet, because I have loved the story. And I wish I wish they'd do another one. It, it's so well written. And it's gone by so fast, like when I start playing, I keep wanting to do more. The future is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way A day of invention is at hand It's 
a mystic futuristic wonderland Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true There's a world of wondrous wonder on display Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. Sweet Expo. Um, before we check out everything else, well, there's that nut and uh, Officer Parker. Let's talk to uh, Grandpa Artie. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The Expo? Sure. But I was wondering. You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his booth? It's the tall one over there. Thanks, Grandpa. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie her job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. Thanks, Gramps. See you around. Hey, what's this over here? Some sort of spinning, spinning dealie. I think that's supposed to be a clock. All right, let's see if we can find Emmett. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Corleone. Hey, what's going on? What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. It was my plan to get him back to inventing what he should be inventing. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Michael Corleone really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Michael? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Danny, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh... Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town, ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh... Where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Alright, so we know Edna is probably the speakeasy arsonist from the previous episodes. How we prove that, I don't know. Come 
on, Emmett. Where are you? So apparently Doc's up last. That's okay. I can't believe Danny let himself get bullied into shutting down Emmett's booth. Emmett's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. All right, we gotta find Doc and help him get his levitator going. And hopefully not get arrested for being <laughs> Yakov Smirnoff. <laughs> but maybe we can go start a theater in Branson. Um, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Next time, we'll take on that other stuff.